a person who has a brain and not ask themselves, why am I here? It's impossible for us to live a life without asking what's the purpose of it. Because we witness, we see, we watch people being born, we watch people live a life, and we watch people die. So where were they before they were born? Where were we? Where are those who've passed away? Where have they gone? These are important, pertinent questions that need answers. And the one who created us is the one who has provided these answers. But let's take a look at what some people believe. It's important to look at what some people say so that we can understand the goodness we are upon. Firstly, you have a group of people who say, you know what? We are here just by coincidence, mere coincidence. There is no creator. There is nothing of that nature. It's just multiplication of organisms. And we've just been here after a big bang that happened out of nature. And so if you ask them, when you die, where are you going to go? They give you different answers. Some of them say, when you die, it's the end of everything. That's it. The Quran speaks about the people of Quraysh who used to say, it's just our life. Death and life is all just the only thing that's going to happen to us. After that, it's all over. So they say, enjoy yourself as much as you can because you're just going to live once. Have you heard the statement flying around YOLO? You only live once. The, the youth know what that means. That is... A statement being uttered by people who are trying to promote following desires. Do as you please because you only live once. Who is going to, you know, take account of your deeds? There's nothing of that nature. So this is one category of people. A second category of people, they say, you know what? We were made just coincidentally. But when we die, we will be transferred into a different creature depending on how we lived our lives some of them might even admit that okay there is a creator but he has kept us rotating so when you die if you were good you become a bird and if you were bad you become a snake yes believe me this is what people are believing today so much so that i have heard it with these ears of mine when we passed a house of a funeral we went there one day and there were some non-muslims who were passing they saw a bird on you know, a few doves on the roof. And I heard the lady say, look at where she's gone. Subhanallah. And I'm thinking to myself, what did I hear? This bird was in existence before the person passed away. But this is what some people think. So I wonder who they would think the snakes are and the scorpions are and so on. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us iman and may he grant us belief. And the intellect we have, wallahi, if we use it correctly, it will lead us to Islam. Take a look at Khalid ibn al-Walid radiallahu an. He was a warrior, very intelligent man. And what happened is, when he had fought the Muslims several times, and you know, the battle of Uhud took place and so on, then there was the treaty of Hudaybiyah, and thereafter the Prophet sallallahu calls his brother and asks him a question. He says, where is Khalid? You know, Khalid. And the discussion rotated around this man. Where is he and what is he doing? Until the Prophet ﷺ says, Ma mithlu Khalidin Islam. A person as intelligent as Khalid, he cannot be ignorant of Islam. He cannot be ignorant of the correctness of this beautiful faith of submission that teaches you to submit to your maker alone. Subhanallah. So if you now go back, you will find the question itself is so beautiful. Why were we created? Wow, what a beautiful question. It is the main question that I am supposed to ask and you in your lives and in mine. Because without the answer of that, we would have defeated the whole purpose of being here. So... The Almighty did not only create mankind and say, right, I've created you, you're on earth and that's it. But he created so many other things, countless other things, things we will know and things we will not know. Things that existed before us and things that shall exist after us. Creatures that were created and creatures that are being created, subhanallah, meaning multiplied and reproduced. There are people who will come whom we will never know. 
same applies. There are creatures that will come that we may never see, subhanallah. But Allah has described for us why he created it. So why should I look at the words of Allah to get an answer? Why? Someone might ask, why do I, do I not look at other things to get an answer? Well, to be honest, if you're an intelligent person, initially you might say, okay, let me not look at what the Almighty has said. Let me not look at the fact that there is a creator. You know, you have some atheists who be, believe there is no creator. So let's take those into consideration and ask a question. So what are we going to look at in order to figure out why we were made? Let's begin to look at the rest of creation or whatever is around us. When you see things around you, you notice there are mountains. Wow. There are rivers, there are seas, there are oceans, there are stars, there are planets. There are so many things. You, when you dig into the mountain, you find gold and silver, which has value. You find platinum, you find diamonds, amazing. You find steel, the ore and so on. And at the same time, people can change the steel from one formation to another in order to benefit from it to create perhaps an object like we have the plastic in front of us, the electricity and so on. All this is taken from the creation, from something around us. It cannot have come just by luck and by chance. If I were to tell you that you see the huge billboard that says red tag sale, you know, there is a sale at red tag, huge billboard. It says sale at red tag. Did someone put it there or did it just come there? Someone put it there. If you told me that, you know what, there is a huge red tag sign or poster in my backyard suddenly and i ask you what happened you say it's nature it is nature it was put there on its own tomorrow there might be one in your yard be careful i will look at you you will look at me and we will start laughing like what we did just now it's foolish you can never ever have such a big sign and such a big poster with and, and it's not something complicated it's something light it's easy a lot of us can make these signs but you cannot have it suddenly find itself there and you say, this is just nature that has brought it. The question we ask is, what is more sophisticated? Is it a human being or a poster? A human being. Human being is far more sophisticated than a poster. So if a human being is more sophisticated than a poster and we believe that a poster that is less sophisticated cannot come there on its own by nature, then how can we believe that human beings came here on their own by nature? Subhanallah. Have you followed what I said? Simple, simple logic. Today you are wearing your clothing. Can you come and say, brother, you are wearing this bisht of yours. How do you have it? And I say, nature. I just stood there and suddenly, boom, it was there. <laughs> can you think that for a moment? But this is something simple. People have made it. They have sewn it. It's something that is understood logical, but something that is far more sophisticated. We are still saying nature, nature. And intelligent people who have brains are saying nature, nature. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless our souls. May he grant us goodness and may he guide humanity at large. So we believe that it is not just nature because Allah, whoever made us has given us a brain. From that brain, we realize that there are things which are less important that we believe firmly can never ever have come just by nature. So those which are more important and more sophisticated, our own minds will lead us to believing there is a maker. Someone put it there. Someone put me here. I was somewhere before I was born and I am somewhere right now and I am going somewhere. I am going somewhere after I die. A few days ago, I was reading a beautiful article of a discussion, a presumed discussion between twins who are in the womb of a mother. Very interesting. Now, obviously, people might say this discussion did not take place. You know, the reality is 
It is a presumed discussion in order to try and understand and explain how mankind is sometimes deceived without realizing that he was in a stage where he perhaps today cannot remember and recall, like Allah says in Surah Al-Dahr. Beautifully put, where Allah is reminding us, has there not come a time upon, upon man before when he was nothing to be mentioned, nothing at all? Today, people refer to me as he. You know, I'm a masculine, so are you, mashallah. And the, the, the sisters referred to as she. And something which doesn't have a brain, we refer to it as it. There was a time when I was neither a he, nor a she, nor an it. Not to be mentioned. When was that? Mo before I was born. Not to be mentioned. And I cannot recall. Can any one of you remember how life was in the womb of your mothers? Allahu Akbar. Not one. Not one. So a discussion between the two, one is saying, wow, you know what? This is a beautiful life. It's so cozy. In where? In the womb. This is so cozy. And the other one is saying, yeah, man, it's warm. Look, we're being fed automatically. And the one says, you know, these eyes, one day they're going to open. He says, nah, they can't open. No ways. He says, we're going to go out of here. He says, what do you mean? There is life outside this womb. No, there's no life outside the womb. Not at all. Life outside the womb? Not at all. So the other one says, no. We will eat from this mouth one day. He says, impossible. We've got an umbilical cord. We connected and that's how we have been chosen to be fed. So he says, no. I'm telling you, we are going to leave this place. We will be eating food. And we will be using our eyes. And we will be breathing something known as air. But the other one says, no ways, impossible. That cannot happen. What happens? One day after this, this, this presumed discussion, the two are born. Suddenly the eyes are open, the lungs come. One screams, the other one screams. Next thing they have feet, they are being fed. And subhanallah, whatever was said was a reality. Today, what we are saying about the hereafter is also a reality. When people tell you, you will be fed with a different type of a food. You will be having a body that will be perfect. You will be having a mind. You will have a paradise. People are saying, no ways, no ways. One day when it comes, subhanallah, then we will sit with each other and say, do you remember we spoke about it in Qatar? And you say, yes, subhanallah, amazing. So if you think of the stages of man, you will realize that Allah has kept something within man that will point him towards the creator one might ask but why did allah create us for what why so allah says the verses i read before you i have not created mankind and jinn kind except for the purpose of them worshiping me wow when we hear this verse a lot of people start thinking ah oh, that means I can't have my car, I'm not allowed to have my perfumes, I can't have my watches, you know, I just need to engage in worship. That's why Allah made me. People don't understand that the term worship means to live your life in a way that whatever you do is within what Allah has allowed you to do. That's it. If you do things within what Allah has allowed you to do, because you are doing them to abstain from that which Allah did not allow you to do, they become acts of worship. Automatically. Amazing. So you use your eyes. MashaAllah. Enjoy. But don't look at that which you're not supposed to. And if your eyes happen to fall upon that, immediately say, Ya Allah, forgive me. Amazing. And we have the enjoyment of different types of food. But we don't make that the purpose of existence. Allah will test us. One day, burnt food will be presented. One day, food will be presented with too much salt. One day, food will be presented as it is coming to you, it falls onto your clothes. All this is a test of Allah. Trying to watch, is your main aim the food? Or are you understanding that you are here in order to react to situations in a way that pleases your maker? 